Ha 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 ha! Large spike. Yes. And we're back, everybody. Uh, this is Chippy with the Friendship Breakers, and we are going to climb down this ladder. Nope. Jump. Let's see here. So we just finished killing the last giant, which is sweet. Now we are going down to uh, Hyde's Tower of Flame. This place is really pretty. In the first game, if you remember Anor Londo, it kind of reminds me of that. And people are drawing parallels between, you know, this game and Dark Souls 1. Even though the developer or developers said that there's no, you know, correlation at all between the two worlds. They're in separate universes. But, you know, there's there's small little things in this game where it's like, oh yeah, you sure it's in a new universe? Are you really sure? You know. They, they make uh, allusions to the previous, not the previous Souls game, like Dark Souls, but more so the characters from it. They make it seem that, you know, uh, Wodrand was actually uh, part of this area, but a long, long time ago kind of thing. But there's nothing to, like, necessarily prove that that is, you know concrete evidence. Oh yeah, Hyde's Tower of Flame. <laughs> it's really funny because I didn't really realize why they call it Hyde's Tower of Flame until like the other day where I looked around here and I was like, oh, let's look up. Oh, it's quite literally a Tower of Flame. Yeah, about that. Anyways, people are saying that this place is like Lodran because of the architecture in the area. It, it looks very reminiscent of, uh, of Anor Londo, you know, the cathedral area and whatnot. Also, really, really important thing. There's a bonfire down here, guys. I didn't know that up until, you know, last playthrough, I think. Let's see how much damage this, or damage this pike does. I'm gonna, you know, go ahead and say it's not gonna be a lot. Ow. Oh, God, kill me. No, I'm not even going to deal with you. Yeah, I have to deal with them. Dang it. The reason I have to deal with them is because there's a guy up there who has a mace. And I have to deal with him, too. Yay. Because... He gives me something that's quite fantastic called Sublime Bone Dust. Oh god, I'm really used to just ripping through these guys with one or two hits. This is excruciating. Yay, what do I get out of it? Oh yeah, nothing. GG game, GG. No! No! Ow. Ow. Uh, and that's why it's really important that you get that bonfire there. Because if you don't get it, you have to walk all the way back from Majula. There was one game or game I went through where I accidentally forgot to get the bonfire in Majula. And the last bonfire I got was actually in the old lady's place. Don't make the same mistake I did. Oh my sweet lord, that took so much time getting way back there. And it wasn't even really that much time. It's like 30 seconds or 40 seconds. But, oh, it just so annoying. Whoa. I did not expect that kind of damage from a two-handed attack. Interesting. Okay. For some reason, this spear that is supposed to do poking damage does a lot more slashing damage. Huh. Problem? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. <sighs> I 
actually, in a sec, I'm probably going to go back to the forest of the fallen, or the last giant, or, you know, whatever. That last area that we were at, because there is a halberd there. And I would really like a halberd right now, actually. Except I don't have the stat requirement for it. Dang it. So it doesn't really matter. I'll go back there at some point. Now what I'm doing here is making it so the platform in that area back there behind this knight will make another platform ar arise because they made it so that... Oh god, that was really close to being a hit. Uh, that these knights are actually guarding switches that make it so that platforms rise. And it just makes the fight easier. But at the same time, I'm trying to think if I should try to do this quick kill. Where <laughs> the the knight actually... Uh, and by knight, I'm talking about the old dragon riders is what they call uh, these guys. But it makes it so that he falls off the edge when he just tries to charge you. It's pretty funny. Lloyd's Talisman. It makes it so that people can't use their Estus flasks. Um... And in the first game, it made mimics go back to sleep in their chests. This game, it does not work. Do not try it. You will just end up getting bit, which is not fun. So, what are we going to do? How are we going to kill this guy? I'm curious to see what the uh, damage is. Like this. From what I found is if you stay to the shield of this guy, the fight goes a lot better. Okay, for some reason, the damage is so much better doing a sweeping attack than it is doing a, a, a poking attack, which makes zero sense when you're using a halberd. Sorry, a, a spear. I'm not even using a halberd. If I was using a halberd, it makes so much more sense. So I'm not sure if you can tell, but uh, this second circle that I'm standing on usually wouldn't be here if I didn't actually activate that one switch. And there's actually another switch where those three knights are that I passed that you can activate, and it'll raise a another platform, but I usually don't need it, so not going to worry about it. But yeah, if you stay really close to this guy right next to a shield. You won't really have an issue with them. Just keep on attacking, be patient, and you'll kill them. Or, you know, Dark Souls might intensify. You might go flying off a ledge for some reason because of a, ra a random poke that he does. Because, you know, Dark Souls intensifies. And it does. It always does. Nah, it's not worth doing two-handed attacks. I like these guys' armor, actually. Super nice. Oh, God! I shouldn't have taken that damage. I'm on the wrong side of him. I really don't want to be here. Dark Souls is really about to intensify here if I don't take a swig of this. Okay. I disagree with that completely. See how I was doing so well, and then it's like, ah, nah, we're going to make it so that you fuck up repeatedly and die against one of the easiest bosses in the game. But then again, I did die against the the last giant, which is kind of humorous, actually. I want you to back up a bit. So I don't go dancing off an edge. Really? Damage from that? Eh, whatever. Um, I, I read online, and I use this as my last build for the game. If you do dual maces, uh, like one-handed maces, <laughs> you can do some stupid damage pretty quick. Uh, and also maces, one-handed maces. Uh, oh, God. Just poke him. Just poke him once. Okay. Woo! War cry! Yay! Dragon Rider Soul. If you uh, use one-handed maces, one in each hand kind of thing, 
your damage output gets ridiculous when you do a power stance. As well, your damage gets ridiculous. Or your poise damage is ridiculous. And what poise does is makes it so that your your repeated attacks will make it so that your opponent gets staggered. Anyways, bonfire here, super important. Don't forget to light bonfires, guys. It gets really funny if you don't. And this lady who I from these mine. It, it's funny because this chick is actually a fake cleric. Uh she she claims to make miracles happen and that's why she's in this place. I expected to sorry. No need for miracles. And she actually uh when you go to I'm not sure if you noticed when I was running to this area, there was an area where you could... There was a pedestal in the middle. And she actually touches that and alters the path. But she's not supposed to touch it. She's actually supposed to just magically make it happen. But anyways, next time in Dark Souls, we will level up a little bit and do some other stuff. Like... I don't know. Let's fight the Pursuer. Yeah, next episode we're fighting the Pursuer. Wave to the camera. Bye, guys! Flumst!